Hello, this presentation on descriptive statistics utilizes basic spreadsheet functions on Excel. And to do so, we're going to be using data for the Russell 2000 index, a market value index here in the United States. I've collected monthly data for the index series and with these I'm going to calculate the monthly rates of return which I've already done here and using the logarithmic form what I did there is equal ln which is a uh, function for natural log open parenthesis you're going to divide the current price the current price being this one for October 2019 by the preceding price which is going to be this one for September of 2019 and that's it and that's how we get this first observation and then you copy down and that's all there is to it alright let's kill that and then let's uh, get on with the, the business of in the first case util uh, showing how to use the basic spreadsheet functions which I've summarized right here so this is your cheat sheet and we're just, we're just gonna show a few of the most important ones beginning with the sample mean which these are the calculations but again to show how that's done it's equal then you type the average function which the computer is going to pull up for you right here so you can double click it or you can type it all out it doesn't really matter you go to the top of the file begin with the value and you highlight working your way down to the last observation right there and you close parenthesis that's it for the median which is the number in the middle it's simply equal to the median you open parenthesis again you go to the top of the file click right there and work your way to the bottom of the file and that's it right there for the mode which is the observation with the highest frequency so you type mode and then be sure in the more current version of Excel to uh, uh, type uh, dot SNGL and then you go up to the top and you click on the first observation and you work your way to the bottom and you close parenthesis mode does not exist in this series because there is no observation with the highest uh, frequency alright so now for the sample variance we're gonna type VAR dot S right there alright and you go to the top of the file right there begin with the first observation and highlight all the way to the bottom and that's your sample variance now for the sample standard deviation you have two choices for, for option number one you can simply take the square root of the variance as you learn take the square root of this guy and that's your standard deviation which you see right here option number two you can utilize the spreadsheet function stdev.s which is this and work your way to the top of the file highlight all the way to the bottom and that's it right there now though for the 75th percentile which calculates the value below which lies 75 percent of the observations so we're gonna use the percentile function that's it right there percentile there you go and for this we're gonna have to go to the top of the file again and start from the first observation go to the bottom but don't close the parenthesis just yet because there's a couple more protocol first you gotta type comma and then you have to tell the computer which percentile value you wish to calculate so here we wish to calculate the 75th percentile so you type 75 percent you can type either 75 percent as, as I've done here or you can also type 0.75 same difference you hit enter and that's your value right there and finally here we want to calculate the first quartile the first quartile is going to be that value below which lies the uh, first quarter 25 percent of the observations all right so for that we type quartile there you go and make sure you type quartile.exe and go to the top of the file and get the first observation work your way down but again don't close it just yet because we got to tell the system which quartile we want to calculate is it the first quartile in which case type 1 second quartile which is the median value the middle observation same thing as the 50th percentile then in that case you type 2 if it's the third quartile which is going to be the 75th percentile right here then you type 3 but we want to do the first quartile so we're going to type 1 and that's it that's all we need to do and that calculates the value telling us that below this negative 2.85 percent and change that we have a quarter of the observations right there so that's all she wrote 
as far as this is concerned. We can accomplish pretty much the same task by utilizing the uh, descriptive statistics dialog box on Excel. And here's your cheat sheet for that. So for that, we're going to go to data and then in data we go to data analysis. If you do not have data analysis, go to file and options and add it in. So here we're going to be calculating, uh, we're going to be obtaining the summary statistics and as I show you here, look for descriptive statistics. So this is now alphabetical order, click on that and OK. Now Excel pulls up stuff I did before so we need to clear all that out so we can start clean, on a clean slate. All right. So let's go back down here. All right, so for the input data, all right, we're going to go to the top of the file. And this time, I recommend that you start from the label right there, return, and then work your way down. And then let's go back down here so we can see precisely what we're working with. And our data is in columns, so look at that way. Check here for labels. So Excel knows that the first cell contains a label and then click here for output and then click right here while your summary is blinking right here click somewhere in the spreadsheet where your output is going to be posted and be sure to check summary statistics you got to check this and then click OK and voila that's what we have right here alright so looking over here to summarize you can see that the mean which is uh, the sample mean that we calculated earlier right there and forget about standard errors, it's a concept you're going to learn later. Median is the middle observation, which is the same thing as the 50th percentile. And mode is the value occurring most frequently. We do not have that in this distribution. Standard deviation as well as variance, these two are measures of dispersion. The larger the standard deviation or variance, the larger, uh, the wider the distribution is, and the less likely you are to obtain an outcome that's close to the average outcome. Cortosis is 1.72. Cortosis is a measure of the peakness of the distribution. Now, as is the case with many software, this cortosis is actually relative cortosis, meaning relative to the normal to the cortosis of the normal distribution, which happens to be three. So, a cortosis of 1.72 tells us that the cortosis, the absolute cortosis of this distribution, is 1.72 points above that of a normal distribution. So one of first two evidence that this distribution is not normal. If it were normal, it'll be symmetric, bell-shaped like this. Another evidence is, so uh, by the way, so when cortosis is positive, we say that the distribution is leptokurtic, meaning that it has, uh, it's more peaked than the normal distribution. All right, and here, the other evidence that the distribution is not normal is that it has a skewness and in this case it's negatively skewed. If it were normal it would have been symmetric and being symmetric means that skewness would be zero. So with the skewness being negative we know that this is going to be skewed to the left as you're about to see in the next uh, portion of this presentation. So given these two pieces of evidence we know that this distribution is not normal pretty like that. Range is simply the uh, difference between the maximum value and the smallest value. So if you come there and go equal, you click on this and minus the lowest value, you're going to get your range right there. And this is simply the sum of all the values, which really doesn't mean anything in the context of this analysis. And this is a wrap on this first part of the presentation.